back to Gillette Connection. I'm Jason Gray, and I'm here today with Janelle Oberlander, who is the president of Gillette College. And Gillette College is an independent college district now. Um, I thought we could talk maybe a little bit about how that's going. Awesome, great, yes, correct. So Gillette Community College District became an independent community college district on uh, August 17th of 2021. And so since that time, we've absolutely been working toward all of the pieces required to stand up an independent community college district. What I often tell people is we're, we're starting a brand new college with a 50 year history because of course Gillette College has been offering classes here since 1969. And so now we get the opportunity to uh, be in control of what those curriculums look like. We get to be in control and make decisions about what is best for our community. So we're very excited about that. But before we can do that, we've got to go through all of the steps required to stand up the accreditation, the institutional accreditation. And so by the end of this uh, this fiscal year for us, which is the end of June, we will have our first application in for our eligibility uh, for institutional accreditation. And that's a really exciting time and it's a pivotal point because it triggers a whole lot of other opportunities. Sure. And so th that's just the next step in the process. What is it, how long past that should it take? What are the, the following steps? You bet. So once we once we get the approval that we are eligible for accreditation, which we don't believe we'll have any issues with that, but it's but it is a process of providing documentation and meeting those eligibility requirements. Uh, then then we go into once we get past that, then we go into what's called pre candidacy stage. And that's a little bit longer of a process because you, you during that time and really you have about a two year window so it could take two years, it could take a little bit less, it could take a little bit longer. Our goal is to be fully accredited by 2025. Okay. And so that's, that's just right on track with where we're at right now. But during those, that two year period, you really have to show evidence that you're graduating students, mm. that your academic processes are in place, that, they're meeting, uh, that we're meeting federal requirements and compliance regulations, that we are going through the federal financial aid process. So there, there's a lot of processes that have to happen, but it is important, I think, to note that until we're through that full process, we are in partnership, we'll continue to be in partnership with the Northern Wyoming Community College oh. District for accreditation. So the students who are coming to Gillette College are taking accredited programs, which means they're transferable, um, it means that they're credentialed. Those pieces are really important to students. They, their financial aid will still be awarded through the Northern Wyoming Community College District until such a time that we stand up our own and we start sure. dispersing federal financial aid. So it's a process. It's a one step at a time, and we don't want to miss a step because if we miss a step, it could it could put us Push back us two back. steps, right? Yeah. So. All right. And is there anything new coming to the college? I mean, as Part of being independent, are we getting any new programs? Are they going to change anything? Sure. So one of the things that we look at when we're going through accreditation, you really don't want to make a lot of changes to your oh, programs. Sure. It just complicates it more. Yeah. However, that being said, we are, we are really excited for uh, the Wyoming Innovation Partnership. And we're part of that, that consortium, which includes all the community colleges and the University of Wyoming and workforce development. This is the Governor Gordon Initiative. Um, to really take a look at the programs that we're offering in the state of Wyoming to train our workforce. We want to make sure we have a highly skilled and a highly trained workforce across the state. So the proposal that we have put in, and we'll know if, if that proposal is funded, hopefully here within the next couple months, but really it's about standing up a, a workforce training center, which would be non-credit bearing. So it would be potentially things like uh, CDL drivers, it could oh, be okay. HVAC, it could be plumbing, it could be those uh, those industry trades that don't necessarily have to have credit associated, but then the goal would be uh, to, to develop them in such a way that if a person wanted to pursue a degree, that that training isn't lost, okay. it's never lost, but that it would follow them into an academic program. Sure. It's called micro-credentialing. And so there's lots of really wonderful opportunities with that as well. Okay. All right. And is there anything else related to the process you'd like to, to share with us? You know, I think it's it's just a step by step process that we have to go through. And we're just we're just as excited to get through the process as our community is. Um, but accreditation, once we achieve institutional accreditation, it's an ongoing process. So once we get that final uh, mark of accreditation, we continue to have to work to achieve accreditation. It's it's ongoing. Then uh, certainly we'll work on our program accreditation for nursing 
and that's a whole separate accreditation process. Oh, so um, it just takes time, but, but we're making good strides, and I have no doubt that we'll be successful in uh, the achievements that we want to see. So, so many people ask me about athletics, and oh. so I, I'm certainly happy to talk about that for just a few moments. So we are really excited that we're bringing athletics back to Campbell County at Gillette College. Some people th th uh, have, have the thought it's too soon. Some people think it's too late. You know, there, there's lots of varying opinions about athletics. But what we believe is that athletics creates um, access to higher education. It creates an opportunity for students who may have otherwise not have been able to attend post-secondary education. It brings a lot of value to our community. Um, we'll bring about 150 students to campus this year because of our athletic program. And those okay. students come, some will come from Gillette, some will come from the state, some will come from the region, some will be international. And what that brings to our community um, is just a wonderful opportunity for those students to be out in the community, be providing community services, working with our elementary, junior high, high school kids. Uh, those students who may want to pursue uh, playing collegiate sports, they'll have the opportunity to do camps with our athletes and our coaches. So there's just a wonderful opportunity uh, for bringing athletics back. We have um, at Gillette College, because this community invested in the college, as you know, uh, we have probably the best facilities in the region. Oh, yeah. uh, Chris Parker, who is the president of the National Association of uh, Junior College, and I said it wrong, the NJCAA, um, he, he was en route to come to Gillette last month, and he got uh, stopped in Chicago because of weather. Oh. But we're excited to get him out here because he will be he will be amazed with the, the facilities that we have. And all the coaches that we've hired who've come here uh, say the same thing, wow, your facilities are phenomenal. And so we want, the, we want those facilities to be used for the intended purpose of what this community envisioned for uh, the Pronghorn Center, sure. uh, the soccer pitch. But we're really also excited about Energy City Voices coming back, and that's the show oh. choir. Mm -hmm. That has been so instrumental in our community and has provided um, some really wonderful enrichment. And so th they will also be back in the fall. So oh, we're excited for that to, to take shape and and to be on the uh, field of competition and for our Energy City Voices to be part of our community again as well. So it's an exciting time at Gillette College. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up? Or? The only thing I would add is if people have questions or if they have concerns, they're always welcome to call me. They can stop, my, stop by my office. My office is in the main building on the second floor, or they can certainly call my office. That number is 681-6201. And if I'm right. not there, my assistant is more than happy to make sure you get on my calendar or get me a contact so I can call back. So anytime the community needs some conversation, they're happy. I'm happy to t visit. All right. All right. Well, thank you very much thank for you. coming today. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay.